Hi guys, so this is a 3.3 um, rational exponent, not a radical exponent. I don't know why I keep saying radical exponent. But this is where you um, start dealing with the radicals, okay? But all you have to do is change the radical into a rational exponent. And then we try to simplify by canceling or by um, uh, multiplying the powers, okay? So um, if you take a look at it, the rule is this. If you have eighth root of x to the power of b, then this becomes x to the power of b over a. The logic behind it is this. You have x to the power of b, which is the inside of the radical sign, and then the, um, the, the nth power, or, or in this case the a, um, becomes 1 over a. Okay, so if it was the square root, it will be 1 over 2. If it was 10th root, it will be 1 over 10, etc. Okay, now then we know that power to the power actually um, becomes the multiplication of those two, so it becomes b over a. So that's the logic behind it. Now, the usefulness of that is that when you have, let's say, square root of, uh, sorry, fourth root of 16, you can actually simplify this in an easier way rather than just going, oh, canceling this and canceling this and canceling this, okay? Um, however, in order for us to do this, um, you have to remember something called prime number factorization, okay? So hopefully you remember this. Um, we're going to do a little bit of review on that first, and then we're going to get into the three examples. Once you get to um, know this, once you get the hang of it, this actually becomes a really, really simple and easy process. So let's take a look at 16 first, okay? So example. So what we're doing is we're taking the prime number factorization of 16. So when you're doing this, the first thing is that you have to choose the smallest possible prime number that divides 16. So we put the upside down division sign or the upside down the long division thing. And then in this case, two divides 16. And then we just keep keep doing the same thing until we get to one. So in this case, eight, um, and then two divides eight as well, and then that becomes four, two and two, and then two divides two at the end, so it is one. Therefore, 16 actually can be represented in a form of exponent um, in a way that it is two to the power of four. Now, some of you may say, then what about the one? I don't care about the one because one doesn't really change much when it is multiplied. So let's do another example of the prime number factorization. So in this case, let's say 243. Now, then obviously, if I ask you to change this into a power form or exponent form using the prime number factorization, you're using the smallest possible prime. Again, remember this prime number means it's just a prime number. Factorization means you're trying to find a factor of um, whatever the composite number here using prime numbers. Okay, so those factors have to be just the prime numbers, okay? So we have three because two doesn't divide three, right? So three, and then it becomes 81. And then we used three again because we know that three um, divides 81 and that becomes 27. And then three also divides that and then nine and then three and three and then three and one. So all we have to do is we just count how many threes we have in the front like before um, with the first example. So we have five of the threes, therefore the 243 is two, um, three to the power of five. Now then you may say, oh, is it the, all the time that we will see, um, we'll see the same numbers in the front? Um, the answer is no. So for example, in this case, let's say we have um, 54 and then 144. So let's take a look at this one, okay? So, if you do the prime number factorization of this, we have even number at the end, so we know that two divides on these, so it's 72, and then two again, that is 36, and then two again, that is 18, and then two again, and that is nine, and then two doesn't divide nine, so we have to divide it by three, because three divides it. So at the end, we can say 144 is two to the power of four times squared. So if you take a look at it, the bases are all prime numbers, and that's why the prime number factorization should be, okay, as end result. So hopefully you're used to it. Now then let's get to the real examples of this. So now we have um, fifth root of 32, okay, fifth root of 32, and it says to simplify. So when you were given, let's say, for example, square root of 4, and it says simplify, we know that it is 2 because 4 is 2 squared. And then the square and a square root cancels each other. Hopefully you were wondering why they cancel each other. Um, here's the reason it, okay? 
So um, if we do the prime number factorization of 32, we just keep dividing it by 2 in this case because 2 divides uh, whatever the result here. And then we get um, 32 as a 2 to the power of 5. So we now know that it's the fifth root of 2 to the power of 5, but I told you that the, the, um, the radical, the nth root, becomes whatever that's inside to the power of 1 over whatever that's outside. So we have 2 to the power of 5 to the power of 1 over 5. So we multiply the powers. So 1 over 5 times 5 gives me 5 over 5. That's basically 2 to the power of 1, which is just a 2. Okay? So... That's why when you had, let's say, square root of 4, this is then 4 to the power of 1 over 2. That's 2 squared to the power of 1 over 2. And then that becomes 2 to the power of 2 over 2. And that's 2, right? That was the reason behind it, okay? Now, then let's take a look at B. So same reason. So you have composite number. Then try 273. Divide this by whatever the prime number in this case, let's say 3. Um, this becomes 80, um, this becomes 91. Oh, sorry, it should be 243. What am I saying? So it should be 243. So then it becomes 81, and then it is 327, 3 and then 9, and then 3 and 3, and then 3 and 1. So we know that this becomes 4, and then 3 to the power of 5. Now, then using this, we can say this is just 3 to the power of 4 over 5. There's nothing we can do, right? Um, because 5 over 4 is not a whole number, so we just leave it that way. When I um, say either simplify or change the radical to an exponent form, okay? Now, the next one, we have um, cube root of 1 over 64. So, same thing. Um, I don't care what the, the denominator is for now because... This actually can be written as separately cube root of 1 over cube root of 64, okay? Uh, hopefully you remember this. If you have square root of 2 over 3, that's basically square root of 2 over square root of 3. You can break the big radical into two smaller brackets, okay? Uh, not, not the bracket, two small, smaller radicals, okay? So remember that. Now, we know that cube root of 1 is basically 1. I can leave it that way. And then 64... 64, using the prime number factorization, um, it becomes 2 to the power of 6. But let's see whether I am correct, okay? So 16, and then 8, 4, and then 2 and 2. So we have 6 of them. So we have cube root of 2 to the power of 6. And this, we know that it's 1 over 2 to the power of 6 to the power of 1 over 3. That's 1 over... 2 to the power of 6 over 3, and that becomes 2, 1 over 2 squared. And remember the uh, last part, when you have a rational, you can simply take the reciprocal of it and then change the power to the negative. So this becomes 2 to the power of negative 2. Okay, so when you have a fraction, don't um, get confused. You just can do this way as well. Uh, one Another way is that you basically change this to 64 to the power of negative 1 to start with. And then we know that 64 is 2 to the power of 6. So this becomes 2 to the power of negative 6. And then you take the square root of, sorry, the cube root of it. So that is 1 over 3. And that is 1 over 3. So it is 2 to the power of negative 2. So either way, you get the answer, okay? Um, there are multiple ways of doing this. So hopefully it was okay. Now as the very last part of it, Let's go back to the previous example of the prime number factorization. So let's say we have 144. Let's say we have, um, sure, square root of 144. Okay, and then you're going to say, oh, how do I simplify this? Because it's not a whole base. Well, take a look at this. This, we know that it is a square root of 2 to the power of 4 times 3 squared. Now, if you have a division, right, like this, we could divide it into... Um, two smaller radicals. If you have multiplication, you can do the same thing. So it is 2 to the power of 4 times um, 3 squared, um, both in a radical sign. Now, when you have addition, like square root of 2 plus 4, you cannot do this, okay? You cannot do this. This is completely wrong. You can only do the breaking uh, when you have division or multiplication. So then, in this case, we have 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 1 half, 
and then three squared to the power of one half. So this is then two squared because four times one half is two and then times three because two times one half is one. So that's it, okay? So hopefully it was easy enough. Um, I really want you to practice uh, this. So practice all this. I'm pretty sure this was for the 3.2. Now this is for the 3.3, .3, okay? So see you guys in class, bye.